Hello, everybody. Thank, thank you, Emil, and thanks for everybody to come into my studio where it just, it seems like the sun is beaming on me at the moment. Um, uh, I, as most of you, I, I believe, have already seen the online exhibition, and it's very much based on memory and remembering uh, during this, with projects focused on this period uh, during COVID, but linking also to the past as I really work constantly with the idea of memory and layering and the past and present that are often brought together. So the focus was on projects that I had uh, begun or were work, major projects I worked on during COVID, but also a link to my previous painting work as well. So this is one of my major projects that I had done during COVID. And this was, again, I know a lot of us here in New York, we were having difficulty with being the epicenter of the first three months of really focusing on doing work. But it was a great time for me, especially of just accumulating research and thinking about things and watching Zooms and, and, uh, and uh, taking classes online and doing research and getting all these ideas so that when I did get the energy to actually work, it, it just all came pouring out. So when things started opening again uh, in about June, and I felt like uh, we needed a kind of jump start with, uh, for me and my whole central booking community, that's uh, a space that I started in uh, 20, uh, 2009 now. Yeah. Um, that focuses on artist books and art and science community. And I work with hundreds of international artists. And I felt, OK, we need something to just play with without worrying too much about, oh, is it going to be a major work? Is it going to be a, 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 an exhibition, whatever? So I had seen Sarah Stengel, a friend of mine, who is also part of the community. And she does a lot of work with uh, mathematically based. And I saw she was playing with these different uh, mathematical nets, which are patterns uh, on Facebook. And there was this one that was the dimpled icos I, <clears throat> I can see this, Ocasahedron. And it just looked like, sorry, it was just looked like a lot of fun. And I thought, okay, what if we just do a project and, um, send out a bunch of these nets to our community and just see what people come up with without any expectations. So Sarah drew up about four different nets, uh, one including this, the Dimple Akasahitrin. And um, we um, then dispersed it to the whole community. And there were about 35 people who were interested, 35 artists in the beginning. And a good number of them, about 25 of them, actually produced work that they were very happy with and stimulated them to make some major projects. We had work that was in ceramics. We had work that was big installations. And then we had work that was just individual pieces. So for me, I very much wanted, I had two things. I had, I had wanted to use the, um, uh, the shapes of these uh, um, nets, but also I wanted to combine it with the content and the subject matter of what was going on in COVID. I was very focused on with all of the ambulances and the refrigerator trucks near me. I wanted to really do something to commemorate so many of my Brooklyn neighbors who died during this pandemic. And so the idea started to come together, even though this is a, a lovely um, shape, the idea really started to come to me when I started uh, using this other shape, um, the uh, cube octahedron. And um, I put it together and I started to think, hmm, this has a feeling almost, it could be a mausoleum. I put you know, two of them together and I started to create this feeling of an installation. Again, my first idea was maybe to put the faces of, of several of the um, 
of people on here. These were just ordinary people that weren't going to get the New York Times obituary, but who had were really important to the everyday fabric of our lives. And um, I decided to just put their names and the age of their death, kind of incised on the top as it would be in, a, uh, in an, an actual mausoleum. And so then I created this uh, map of Brooklyn in the shape of the net as it's flat. And this becomes a whole uh, installation in itself. Now, nine people is just basically small representation, but it is meant to stand for a larger group of the thousands that died here. And I can see it also when they becoming a very large installation where I could put many, many more of, of our uh, uh, commemorate our uh, fellow neighbors uh, in a way that just shows the huge loss that we have had during this period. Um, and then I also wanted, this was the actual there once again, um, that was then cut up and folded and glued. And this was, since this was a one of, kind, of a kind piece, I really also want to do an addition version of it where where it could become a keepsake for other people as well. And so what I did, let me just move this out of the way a bit. And what I did was I created this piece where again, it shows the whole piece together. And then each one of the pages is a, a uh, net that is already with the name of the person who died already to be cut out. And you can either leave it like this as a, um, as a record of this particular time, or you could actually cut them out and put, put this together for yourself. So that was one of the major projects that I did that actually came from um, that period, during that period. But I was also uh, trying to work on some more paintings as well, uh, get myself back into the paintings. Um, when the, when the co uh, COVID hit and we got locked down, um, I had just opened a show of five artists in residence at Brooklyn Botanic Garden. And the problem was that two weeks later, it was shut down. So I call it kind of our Sleeping Beauty show, which we hope will be reopening soon. But in the meantime, it's just been sitting there. And um, in that show, Susan Rostow and I both uh, uh, did our first animation together. And we were really very pleased with how that worked out. So, so as I say, I love all of these collaborations with these artists that I've known forever and worked on forever, worked with forever. During the pandemic, the first months when I couldn't do anything that was really um, uh, of, of this kind of a, a, a nature and intensity, um, I did the post office um, uh, collaboration with Despa Magoni. Um, it was just a real, it was a period where uh, I felt collaboration was even more important than ever to reach out to our community. So here's reaching back to our painting. Now you'll see this one on, our, on the website in the exhibition, but it's very hard to see scale unless it's a human being next to it. So I wanted to show you this simulation here of a wall and um, these pieces, this is all oil painting on, um, and each one of these are uh, on linen uh, that is then glued to um, a panel. I find working on a, uh, on a panel, when you're working the small, you don't have that balance. So it's a lot easier for me to work the small in such detail on a, on a, on a panel, but I like the surface of working on linen as well. And you can see this is, these are four panels. I like to build up uh, each work Normally, even though they're small, I build them up with multiple panels. And behind me, you will see my red, um, yellow, red, uh, blue series there. 
And those are among my larger paintings. But this is much more to the scale where I usually work. But you can see the subject matter is still very much the same. From my travels, I'm constantly photographing. And I'm constantly keeping a record of um, whatever I see spaces, uh, statuary, uh, interesting facades, uh, grotesques, um, uh, gargoyles, anything uh, that has a feel of a human hand to it, but they're, they're actually not populated with actual human beings, just the layers of the memories of, of people who have lived there and been there before. And these are all become these amalgam imagery, even though they all look like everything here kind of exists in the same world, in reality, they don't. Um, and then often I will uh, introduce a flat plane or a model plane of color, just to, again, bring us back to the fact that these aren't real images either, that these are all uh, just painted surfaces. So this is, this is my painting from the past. And um, then I, I had a project that was already being worked on during this uh, uh, couple of years it was actually started with the New York Historical Society. And again, I had chosen uh, 14 other artists to do research and I love doing these research projects as well with these institutions that I myself have always wanted to spend time with. And uh, we all, each one of us were there on our own time to research on the project, which was thematically around um, here where I live on the Brooklyn waterfront, uh, the ecosystem uh, through the ages. And each artist was going to make an installation around it. The, coming from all different directions. I was, um, and of course for me, I was looking at the architecture through, through the ages and, um, and taking with, through the years, I've been taking th thousands of pictures over here. Um, and what I then did was I, I tried to want to use the research that I found and combine that with what imagery I had um, taken from myself as well. So found imagery with my own imagery. And this is um, what I found. One of the things that I did in my research was quite these wonderful old maps of the area. And you can see it's, uh, this is uh, about the improvement of this area. So it's a 19th century map and uh, and how humans are intervening and thought that they were improving the area. Um, and what I did was I blew up this map for the component for the painting component component. And um, I took a section of the map, and each section then becomes the background, if you will, of where all the images are layered and interspersed and um, built upon. And there are six panels here, and each one will be another piece of this map that as it goes around this whole coast. So that's the painting component of this, um, of this particular project. And to show you a bit of my process is, um, this is kind of the end product of uh, almost of my process, is when I've already, uh, it's hard to see here, but I've cut and pasted and, um, put all kinds of um, elements. I kind of push and pull, try different elements. And then of course, when I'm building up several panels, they have to really sequence. So there comes the book idea again, you know, as I say, the work kind of works back and forth. So, um, so this component of this installation, this is the painting uh, component. And this gives me an idea. This is, you know, it's not to be copied, it's really, for me, just an idea of how I'm going to compose the final painting. Um, and you can see that it's not, it, it's just basically uh, compositional tools, not so much anything with color or um, anything beyond that. Um, so this is the first, the beginning of the painting. And then the next, I will be starting to add the other elements 
on top of this map. But for this project, the idea that first came to me was actually a book idea before the paintings arrived. Um, again, as I say, this was all gelling in my brain while I was uh, watching everything, researching, reading all of this during the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and ideas started to gel. And this box that has been sitting in my studio for years that somebody gave me, suddenly I realized that, oh, I had the idea of what I wanted to do, was I wanted to take each one of these draws and create a pop-up um, page of a book of, of imagery that of um, this um, idea of the waterfront here, all these photographs that I've been taking to create this sense of the waterfront through time, through different weather, through night and day. And, um, and they would have to fit in, inside each one of these drawers. So it started with this box. Now, what I'm going to do right now is pretty much take out this box from this box, what you will see later um, happens with the actual animation that Susan and I made from this. But this first here, these are uh, again, images of the maps. And so the first thing that gets laid out is the map. And again, I printed it on paper, this kind of rice paper, so that it would em emulate something that was an old map, even though all I had was the photograph of the original. And then each one of these, now you can see each one is a pop-up book. There. And so you can see the back, I made, I did uh, went, um, sunsets. And then for, then I created the three sides to create an environment. I took, take out all the color once that's together, Photoshop it together and start to build it so that it kind of, even though it's not real space, but somehow it works so that visually until you really look very close, it feels like you're in one space. And then I added other interior elements to create the, the rest of the three-dimensional space. And so this happens with every single one of uh, these pages. And again, And you can see as they're put next to each other that they have a very different feel about them. Um, some are very much in focus, some out of focus, um, hazy through the rain. Um, there's uh, some feel more like the night, some feel more like the day. And so each one works distinctively, but also works together for all four of them. So again, I, this idea worked out during the beginning of the pandemic, but over the summer is when I was really starting to put it together, that I could stay in the studio, focus enough, um, and bring myself back into this, creating these, this world here. And there we go. And for your pleasure, we're going to finish this presentation off with um, a showing of the animation that Susan and I did. Now, again, Susan and I had no idea that, oops. <laughs> All right. Uh, Susan and I had no idea what each one was doing during this period, but uh, uh, she created these wonderful sculptural small figures. Uh, and I created the setting for them.
Well, yeah. thank you all, and I'm very glad that you were able to all come to my studio for a visit.